ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ರಾಮಾನುಜಾಯ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಹೈಂ ಹ್ರೀಂ ಶ್ರೀಂ ಲಿತಾಂಬಿಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಹೈಂ ಹ್ರೀಂ ಶ್ರೀಂ ಲಿತಾಂಬಿಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಹೈಂ ಹ್ರೀಂ ಶ್ರೀಂ ಮಹಾಲಿತಾಂಬಿಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಭೂರ್ಭುವಸ್ಸು ತತ್ಸ ವಿತರ್ವರೆ ಎಣ್ಣಂ ಭರ್ಗೋ ದೇವಸ್ಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ದಿಯೋ ಯೋ ನ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯಾತ್ ಓಂ ಭೂರ್ಭುವಸ್ಸು ತತ್ಸ ವಿತರ್ವರೆ ಎಣ್ಣಂ ಭರ್ಗೋ ದೇವಸ್ಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ದಿಯೋ ಯೋ ನ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯಾತ್ ಡಿಯರ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಯೂಶುವಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಟು ಟು ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಪ್ರವಚನ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಅ ವೀಕ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ರಾಮನವಮಿ ಫೆಸ್ಟಿವಲ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ and in this connection because we closed the temples for any functions all over uk i thought it is better for me to read ramayana pravachana in the house so that everybody can share the knowledge of ramayana uh, parayana in this crucial time among several versions of ramayana adhyatma ramayana has its own special standing its significance can be assessed by the fact that it was recited by mahadeva parameshwara to the soul audience his console consort parvati consolidation of spirituality is its special feature and accordingly it commences with rama hrudaya that is a core knowledge of rama and almost ends with rama geeta in fact the entire ramayana has been portrayed to illustrate the status of jiva jagat and paramatma finally it helps in self emancipation of an individual through the practice of devotional affection to sita and rama and hanuman this the ramayana adhyatma ramayana is told by lord ishwara to parvati and their conversation is became adhyatma ramayana Ra, Ra, Shiva is also disciple of Rama and Rama is also disciple of Shiva. When we chant uh, uh, Sandhya Mandana Mantras, Shiva Shcha Hurdayam Vishnuhu, Vishnu Shcha Hurdayam Shiva. Andre, that means Shiva is also in the heart of Vishnu and Vishnu is also in the heart of Shiva. ಮಹಾವಿಷ್ಣು ಗಿವನ್ ಹೇಸ್ ಪ್ರದರ್ಶನ ದರ್ಶನ ಟು ಕೌಸಲ್ಯ ಮಾತಾ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಫರ್ ಹರ್ ಸಿನ್ಸಿಯರ್ ಕೌಸಲ್ಯ ಆಫರ್ ಹರ್ ಸಿನ್ಸಿಯರ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಟು ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ದಿ ಕೌಸಲ್ಯ ಮಾತಾ ಕ್ವೀನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಶರಥ ಓವರ್ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಬ್ಲೆಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹರ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು mentioned my advent is in honor of my words to brahma and is aimed to eliminate the bad demons including ravana he also fulfilled your desire which you had sought through your erstwhile penance with dashratha you are really fortunate to have glimpse of my darshana those who will recite or listen to this episode will attain sauropya moksha liberated soul blessed with my divine form for they will never lose my sight at the time of the death the people who narrated and understood the story of lord vishnu's darshana to kausalya if they recite or listen to this episode will attain sauro saropya moksha liberated soul blessed with 
with divine form of Lord Vishnu, for they will never lose Lord Vishnu's sight at the time of the death. Thereafter, he assumed the form of a child. Hearing the birth of a male child, the king Dashrata, accompanied by Guru Vasishta, arrived at the inner palace and had a look at the charming child. Subsequently, Kaki gave birth to a son and Sumitra gave birth to two sons. The king liberally gave gifts of thousands of, of gold, gems, garments and uh, all the villages and supplied and cows to the Brahmins. Later, Guru Vasishta Maharshi uh, did the Namakarana ceremony of all these four children. The eldest son, who is a source of visual delight to others, is Rama, named as Rama. The second son, who will prove upholder of the earth, is Bharata, the son of Kaikeya. The third one, possessed with auspiciousness, is Lakshmana. And the fourth one, slayer of enemies, is Shatrugna. Lakshmana was born from the share of Payasa, which Kausalya and Kausalya and Kaiki is paired for Sumitra. And similarly, Shatrugna was born from the share of Kaikeya's paisa given to Sumitra. This inherent sharing affinity constituted two pairs, Rama and Lakshmana and Bharata and Shatrugna. They were always seen grouped in the pair in the palace and also in future life. Lord Dashrata and Kausalya enjoyed their childhood of four sons. They were delighted when they saw their limping tiny legs stumbling behind the cows, the gems arranged in the form of a people leaf over their foreheads, waist having rings and tiger nails wrapped together and ringing notes of anklets had been source of joy in the royal courtyard of Dashrata Maharaj. While taking food, Dashrata Maharaj used to call Rama to share food with him. When he did not answer his call, Kausalya used to run behind him. Lo and behold, she was not able to catch him. Realizing Mother was tired of running behind him, he used to run fast close to Dashrata with mud smear hand, smear hands and feet. Taking a parcel of food, he would again run out beyond access. This is how the childhood days passed on. See, Rama's childhood is passed on with playing with mummy, mother and father. Feast marked a very occasion of monthly or weekly occurrence of birthdays in, in all over the world and also in Dashrata's palace. Dashrata's palace, including the three queens and four sons, enjoying the childhood life in uh, Dashrata's palace. When Kausalya put Rama into the swing, she was telling the song, praying La Rama. And the reappearance of Rama is big celebrated in all the Hindu temples all over the world. And also Iskan also, all over the Iskan temples also, they made Rama's appearance day. The, the palace is full of uh, festival season in the palace with uh, Rama and Lakshmana and Bharata and Shatrugna. My daddy was very fond of doing Rama Bhajane. When I was a child, five year old, in Kannika Parameshwari Devasthana in, in Sringeri, in my village, we used to do Rama Navami and Ramotsava festival for nearly 30 days. And this one of the song, when Rama's appearance day, this song was, was told in the temple. Rama lali, mega shama lali, tamara sadhala naina taniya lali, shata patra madri suta shata patra nayana, mitra mamsha jata nuta vishwamitra. Rama lali, mega shama lali, tamara sadhala naina taniya lali, Mitra Vamsha Jata Nuta Vishwa Mitra Gora Tata Kanga Vara Tara Kanamo Ramalali Megashamalali 
ತಮರಸ ದಳ ನೈನ ತನಿಯಲಾಲಿ ಶುಚಿ ಸತಿ ಋಷಿ ಸತಿ ಶಪಾರ ಸೀತಾರಮಣ ಸಾಕೇತ ಪುರ ದಿನ ತಲೋ ಸರ್ವರಕ್ಷಕ ರಮಲಾಲಿ ಮೇಘ ಶಮಲಾಲಿ ತಮರಸ ದಳ ನೈನ ತನಿಯಲಾಲಿ ಕನಕ ಮೈದ ತೊಟ್ಟಿಲೊಳಗೆ ಇನ ಕೂಲೇಂದ್ರ ವಿನಯದಿಂದ ಪವಡಿ ಸಯ್ಯ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರ ರಾಮಲಾಲಿ ಮೇಘ ಶಮಲಾಲಿ ತಮರಸ ದಳ ನೈನ ತನಿಯಲಾಲಿ ವಿನಯದಿಂದ ಕನಕದ ಕನಕಮಯದ ತೊಟ್ಟಿಲೊಳಗೆ ಇನ ಕೂಲೇಂದ್ರ ವಿನಯದಿಂದ ಪವಡಿ ಸಯ್ಯ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರ ರಾಮಲಾಲಿ ಮೇಘ ಶಮಲಾಲಿ ತಮರಸ ದಳ ನೈನ ತನಿಯಲಾಲಿ ರಾಮ ಜೋ ಜೋ ಪೌರ್ಣ ಕಾಮ ಜೋ ಜೋ ಸೋಮಶೇಖರ ದೇವಿ ನತ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ಜೋ ಜೋ ರಾಮಲಾಲಿ ಮೇಘ ಶಮಲಾಲಿ ತಮರಸ ದಳ ನೈನ ತನಿಯಲಾಲಿ ಜೋ 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 ರಾಮ ಸದ್ಗುಣ ದಾಮ ಜೋ 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 ರಾಮ ಸದ್ಗುಣ ದಾಮ ಜೋ 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 ರಾಮ ಜೋ 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 ರಾಮ ಸದ್ಗುಣ ದಾಮ ಜೋ 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 ರಾಮ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಸಾಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಡಿಡ್ ಇನ್ ಚಾಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ರಾಮೋತ್ಸವ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ವಿಲೇಜ್ ಇನ್ ಶೃಂಗೇರಿ another song was a very small someone janaki priya kanta rama deena dayalo prabhu bhagavanta deena dayalo prabhu bhagavanta janaki priya kanta rama janaki priya kanta rama manava hamsa banu prakasha manava hamsa banu prakasha dhyani pe isha purnisu asha dhyani pe isha purnisu asha janaki priya kanta rama dasharath kuvara asura samara dasharath kuvara asura samara asadana veera vasudayal sundara asadana veera vasudayal sundara janaki priya kanta rama janaki priya kanta rama deena dayalo prabhu bhagavanta deena dayalo prabhu bhagavanta janaki priya kanta rama janaki priya kanta rama so the childhood of rama in the vasudhas palace is is excellently described in valmiki ramayana and also also in adhyatma ramayana it is very interesting to do rama bhajana and and reading the rama story one incident small once rama sought from kausalya some sweet food items which she could not hear so rama became angry he broke all his utensils using the baton in his tiny hands the butter burst out of the broken parts and rama enjoyed distributing among his brothers some part of butter fell on the floor when kausalya was in sight the brothers ran away the chasing mother could manage could be difficult run over slippery floors finally they were caught and drawn affectionately close to the mother's chest when they entered their teens you know when they became grown up the guru vasishta maharshi performed their yajnopavita samskara that is a sacred that ceremony yajnopavita samskara is wearing started wearing the yajnopavita with gayatri initiation they were subsequently initiated to the learning of scriptures archery horse riding etc every day morning getting ready with bath and worship etc they used to bow their heads to the feet of parents riding horses they used to visit forest 
and uh, for hunting violent animals. They used to listen regularly to lessons of scriptures from the teachers and sages of Sister Maharshi. They also used to comment on the explanation and scriptures. Lord Parameshwara continued recitation of Ramayana to his consort, consort Parvati Mahadev. And Sutta Maharshi continued the same story to all the sages. Subsequently, Vishwamitra Maharshi left with them for Mithila Nagara, the city of Janakamaha, Janakamaha Raja. Coming to the Ganga, Ganges Bank, Ganga Bank, they asked for boat and the boatman spoke, I can't take across Rama unless I wash his feet perfectly. The dust of his feet is capable of converting a stone into a woman. There is hardly any difference between the stone and the wood, for both are inert. If my boat turns into a woman, I would lose my earning of livelihood, which is assured from this boat. Saying thus, the boatman washed his feet and took them across the Ganga River. Talking, taking route to Mithila Nagara, Vishwamitra Rishi, Rama and Lakshmana arrived there in the morning and stayed at a place where other sages are also staying. When Janaka Maharaji heard about arrival of Kaushika, the another name of Vishwamitra is Kaushika, Vishwamitra Maharaji, he came to pay his respect to him, offering his salutation to the feet of Lord Vishwamitra. The king had a look at two princes accompanying the sage Rama and Lakshmana, impressed by the aura of two brothers. He offered them due respect and mentioned, Who are they? I have a feeling as if I have a vision of Naranarayana. The sage Vishwamitra introduced Rama and Lakshmana to Janaka Maharaja. They are sons of Dasharatha, the king of Ayodhya. I had sought their hands from Dasharatha to help complete my Ednya. On the way to my ashrama, Rama killed the dreadful demoness Tataka, Tataki with one arrow. Subsequently, he killed Subahu and shot Maricha live in the sea. On completion of my Ajna, I took him here to show the great bow of Lord Shiva, Lord Parameshwara. On way, before crossing the Ganga, Rama liberated Ahalya from the curse of her husband. Touch of his holy feet transferred her back to her original lady form. Offering worship to him, she had joined her husband Gautama Maharshi. Thereafter, the stage, the Vishwamitra, spoke to Janaka Maharshi, Janaka Maharaja. I have heard that bow of Lord Shiva is worshipped by you in your palace and several kings had a glimpse of it. Rama is here now and you may show him the great bow. He wants to go back to see his parents. Janaka Maharaja immediately commanded his minister to bring the bow. When the minister was out, the king proposed to sage Vishwamitra, if Rama strings the bow, I would marry my daughter Sita to him. Hearing the king's proposal, the Lord Janaka Maharaja proposed to the sage Vishwamitra, if Rama strings the bow, I would marry my daughter Sita to Lord Rama. Hearing the king's proposal, the sage Vishwamitra looked smilingly at Rama. The bow was brought by 5,000 strong carriers. It was fully decorated with rings and garlands. Rama was glad to see the great bow. He got up and lifted the bow by his left hand and strung it readily in presence of other kings in the Swayamvara. When he pulled the string, the bow broke with a loud sound audible in all the world of gods, sages, Siddha and, and Netherland. Gods showered flower over Rama. Celestial drums sounded sweet notes and heavenly Damsels presented delightful dances. The king Janaka Maharaja embraced Ramachandra and queens heard a pleasant surprise. Subsequently, Sita arrived there walking on a steady steps, bearing with sweet smile and holding a golden garland in her right hand. She gladly garlanded Rama. The scene was witnessed by women and queens looking from windows and terraces of the mansions. Thereafter, Janaka submitted to 
sage Vishwamitra Maharshi, the warm message should be sent to the King Dashrata, inviting for the marriage of all the princes. He is welcome here with all his sons, gurus and ministers. Accepting his proposal, Vishwamitra sent fast messengers to Ayodhya to bring Lord Dashrata, the king and the queens. When the messengers informed the king Dashrata with heartening news, the overjoyed king Dashrata asked his ministers to make arrangement to move to Mithilapuri immediately. Keep ready my chariot, keeping sacred fire, Arundhati, wife of Vishwa, Vasishta Maharshi, with Vasishta Maharshi and mothers of Rama in front. Let us move henceforth. Soon the marriage position moved for Mithila. Subsequently, when Janaka heard about the arrival of, the, of Ayodhya's king Dasharatha Maharaja, he went forward with his guru, Shatananda, to receive him with warm greetings. Rama and Lakshmana met Dasharatha, king of Ayodhya, and bowed low to his feet. Embracing Rama, Dasharatha expressed his happiness. After a long time, I see your charming face, Dasharatha said. By the grace of the Lord Vishwamitra, everything has come up well. He again drew him close and snipped his head as a mark of intense affection to Lord Rama. Thereafter, Janaka Maharaja took the king, queens and others to the, pal others to the place of their comfortable stay in Mithila Palace. On the day of auspicious moment for wedding, Janaka Maharaja invited Rama to well-decorated, widely spread mandapa. Wedding mandapa, wedding mandapa. It has, it had sleek, bejeweled pools, attractive arches, fruits, flowers, and leaves of pearls and germs, gem, gems, and was occupied by holy priest, clad with garments and jewels. The place was crowded with married, beautifully clad, charming woman. Rama was given an excellent golden seat. The environment was pervaded with sweet notes of music and songs. Shatananda, who is Kulaguru for Janaka Maharaja, is the son of Gautama Maharshi, who cursed his mother. Gaut and later came to know Rama, liberated his mother. So he came to the holy feet of Rama on his own hands and on his feet and uh, Shatananda submitted his prayers to Lord Rama who liberated his mother. He felt lucky that he got the same holy water which was usually accepted by Lord Shiva, Brahma and sages over their heads. Holding the hand of Sita, the daughter of uh, Janaka Maharaja with sacred rice and water and following the procedures of wedding Janaka Maharaja placed her hands over the hand of Rama. Thereafter, he mentioned, Be glad, I offer fully dressed and bejeweled Sita Maha Kanya to you. On doing this, Janaka Maharaja was overjoyed as if he felt the pleasure of ocean who had offered the hands of Goddess Lakshmi to Vishnu. In close succession, he married his daughter Urmila to Lakshmana and his brother's daughters Mandavi and Shutakirti to Bharata and Shatrugna respectively. Janaka Maharaja, of king of Mithila, narrated to Vasishta Maharshi and Vishwamitra Maharshi what once Narada had told him about Sita. Once I had tilled the yajna, once I tilled the bow, tilled the yajna land for its purification, with the turn of soil from the Share. I could recover Sita from the earth. Having daughter-like affection with the baby, I handed her to my wife. Later I was alone and Narada arrived playing Narayana's glory on his violin called Mahat Mahati. Narada was playing his veena called Mahati. When I offered him warm respect and he settled in his seat, he spoke to me. I disclose very important fact to you today, Janaka Maharaja. For the well-being of sages and common people, Narayana has incarnated as Rama in the house of Dasharatha Maharaja in Ayodhya. 
he was incarnated with his full potency contained in four parts he himself shesha shanka and chakra his eternal consort yogamaya has arrived to your palace as sita you have to be fully abiding in marrying sita to rama and no other person saying thus he left by sky route narada told this some time ago that's what janaka maharaja told dashratha then after i thought a way out to ensure her marriage to rama after defeating tripura demon mahadeva had handed over his bow to my grandfather i used that sacred bow as an item of my vow pleasant janaka maharaja further mentioned today that technique repaid reaped fruit i am really fortunate to get the holy washed water over my head it is this holy water which pleased bali chakravarti to become indra in the future holy dust of his feet has emancipated ahalya i seek refuge in that holy feet which had made gods and sages are fearless concluding the story janaka maharaja gave fabulous dowry gifts 1 billion dinar means gold coins 10000 chariots 1 million horses 600 elephants 100000 infantry and 300 maids to sita he also gifted lots of precious garments jewels gems and gold to sita separately this was followed by honors bestowed upon vasishta maharshi and other sages vishwamitra he gave fabulous gift to dashrath maharaja bharata lakshmana shatrugna and the married daughters at the time of their farewell the queens of mithila giving warm send off to their daughters and wives be subservient to your mother in law your mother in mother's in law and husband concurrently sweet sound of celestial kettle drums and other instruments of mithila pervaded the air Dashrath was about to go out of his palace but Dashrath Maharaja saw Parashurama in his front he appeared very angry and the king was so much scared that he forgot to greet him and cried help me help me bless my sons and la- with longevity ignoring Dashrath he moved to Rama you have broken the old bow and have assumed yourself to be a great and mighty warrior come on and try your potential with me take my Vaishnava bow, and if you could string it, then only I could, I would fight with you. Otherwise, adhering to my practice of eliminating Shatriya, I would kill all of you. Rama grabbed the bow from Parashurama's hand, and in trice strung that, loading an arrow from his quiver. Rama asked, "This arrow is infallible. It will either destroy your earned potential from lifelong penance, or damage your foot." restricting your movement parashurama losing his radiance realized the divinity of rama and submitted i recall the predictions of vishnu now in early age i had taken penance at chakratirtha to please vishnu he appeared and blessed me to kill krithivarma krith ka kill uh, sahasrarjuna the killer of my father he directed me to divide the earth from kratriya and 21 times and offer the earth to kashyapa after grabbing it from kshatriyas during treta yuga i would incarnate as rama and withdraw your potency you will then be free only to undertake penance and remain on earth until the end of the kalpa i did as directed by him therefore use the arrow to take away my earned penance and release me from undertaking the penance again as advised Rama blotted his penance using the arrow chanting his glory and giving round to Rama Parshurama offered salutation to him and left of Mahendra Parvata as advised Rama blotted his penance using the arrow chanting his glory and giving round to Rama Parshurama offered salutation to Rama and left for Mahendra Parvata Dashrath I embraced Ramachandra as if he had come back alive from the death trap thereafter they arrived in ayodhya and rama with brothers and wives spent happy days in dashrath's palace 
Later, Yudhijit, the maternal uncle of Bharata, arrived to take Bharata to Kaikeyi Desha. The king Dasanatha allowed Bharata and Shatrugna depart with Yudhijit, the king of Kaikeyi Desha. Narada met Rama. One afternoon, Rama was relaxing in the courtyard while Sita was fanning his face. In the meanwhile, Ramachandra saw Narada Maharshi descending down from the sky. He got up and greeted the sage. After offering him seat, he inquired about the purpose of his arrival. What can I do for you? The sage prized Rama and Sita for their divinity and chanted the glory of their potency. He mentioned individual soul loses the contact with the Almighty due to the prevalence of ignorance and lack of understanding the purpose of this life. Sita is the potency of Yogamaya who creates, protects and nourishes all the beings. All this happens under your command. My father Brahma was born from your navel and therefore I am your grandson. I seek your compassion on servant of servants like me. Subsequently, Narada disclosed Brahma has directed me to see you. The king Dasharatha now intends to coronate you. Once you are involved in the royal responsibilities as a Yuvaraja, the main objective of your advent to kill Ravana is feared to have been put to back burner. Rama replied with a smile, I am conscious to my woe of eliminating the demons. Everything will take place as ordained. Tomorrow I would, de I would depart to Dandaka forest for 14 years and stay there in the garb of, in the garb of an ascetic. On the pretext of Sita's abduction, Ravana shall be subsequently killed. Lord Narada Maharshi was happy to hear Ramachandra and as a mark of respect, he offered three rounds to him, bowing head to his feet, he left through the sky route. The presence of Narada coming to the Dashrata's palace, not known to anybody apart from Rama and Sita. Lord Parameshwara continued his narrating the Ramayana to Parvati. Dashrata invited Vasishta Maharshi to his chamber and submitted. The citizens are happy with the nobility of Rama. I have become old and although uh, Bharata and Shatugna are out to his grandfather's house, I prefer to coronate Rama as a king from tomorrow. You may take Rama in confidence and advise Sumant Sumantra to make necessary arrangements for tomorrow's functions. Sumantra, Sumantra was summoned and Vishwa and Vasishta Maharshi enlisted the course of tomorrow's function. Tomorrow morning, 16 maiden fully dressed and bejeweled, bejeweled shall stand on the main entry. Four excellent elephants of Airavata breed should be present. Thousands of gold pots should be arranged filled with water of sacred places. Three new deer skin and one royal umbrella should be kept ready. Varieties of garments and jewels, sages holding kusha, in their hands should be available at the venue of coronation. Dancers and musicians should commence their presentations. Contingent of armed forces and elephants, chariots and horses should stand in readiness outside the venue of our palace. The deities of all the temples should be worshipped and vassal kings should be invited to be present with the varieties of gifts. After discussing with Sumantra, the Prime Minister of Dasharatha, Vasishta Maharshi was driven in his chariot to his place of Rama, crossing the three thresholds and without doing any formality of sending message of his arrival, he walked straight away in the inner chamber of Ramachandra. He received warm greeting from Rama and Sita, who washed his feet and sprayed the holy water over his head. Impressed by the modesty of Rama, Vasishta Maharshi spoke to him. Brahma Mahadeva and others crave to receive holy washed water of your feet. But today, for the benefit of common man, you have demonstrated to them as to how 
to behave with guru and you have taken the water of my feet over your head i am really fortunate i know you are born to kill demon ravana but others are not aware of this fact the occupation of royal guru is not prize worthy and scriptures advise to keep away from such position still i accepted this position in your family because brahma had earlier informed him that in the family of ikshvaku narayana would arrive in the human form as rama i feel privileged today and i seek one favor that your maya should not afflict me in my life he also assured rama that he will not repeat such things again in future thereafter he disclosed to rama the message of the king dashratha that tomorrow he would be crowned as the king he advised rama to keep fast keep fast with sita until tomorrow and maintaining celibacy use ground as your bed he left saying he would see them tomorrow during coronation looking towards the lakshmana rama spoke to him tomorrow i will be crowned but you will be the real regal actor since you are my soul wandering outside you are my soul soul wandering outside was it coming back to the king made him aware of his meeting with rama someone announced in the city about tomorrow's function of coronation of rama he also informed kausalya and sumitra happy to learn about the coronation of rama kausalya gave a precious gift to the person who gave her the news later she worshiped the goddess lakshmi lakshmi goddess lakshmi is his wife of lord narayana she had a hunch of kaikeyi's obstruction and therefore she also worshiped durga in the meanwhile gods invoked the services of goddess saraswati to poison the mind of mantara and kaikeyi when mantara who had three distortions in her body went up the terrace she noticed the festivity of ayodhya outside the palace the streets and mansions were decorated with lights and festoons coming down she learned from other maid tomorrow is the coronation of rama and that's why kausalya is distributing gift to others she rushed to kaikeyi and told her oh fool you are sleeping unaware of your ill luck learning about the incarnation of rama from mantara she gave one bejeweled anklet to her and spoke it is good luck that rama shall be king he takes my care more than bharat mantara poisoned her mind you are naive and the king is cunning he drew away bharat and shatrughna and arranged the coronation in their absence once rama is king lakshmana being quite close to him shall enjoy the regal honor bharat shall either be banished or killed and you will become forever the maid of kausalya i tell you that you must demand two boons from the king dashratha now first bharata shall be crowned as a king and second rama to be sent for 14 years to the forest i remember you told me that fighting demons from the side of gods the nail of the axle of a chariot of the king dashratha had broken and your skillful hand had adver- averted the disaster when the battle was over the king noticed your hand engaged in the axle to keep the chariot running pleased with her brave with your brave services he asked you to ask for two bones but you deferred them keeping them in his custody you should today climb those bones go and uh, lie on the floor of kapoda go and lie on the floor of of kupovana displeasure cell without any jewels over her body you will not listen to flattering words of king until he meets your demand after a while kaikeyi got convinced by the advice of mantara she did what mantara had advised her to spoke to her i will not leave the displeasure cell unless the king meets my claims assured kaikeyi's resolve mantara left for her house this is the mantra is the kaikeyi's 
assistant in the house in her palace and mantara spoiled the mind of kaikeyi and asked her to demand these two boons at this time of the junction of uh, of crowning of maharaja sri rama as a maharaja aryo raja dashrath maharaja prepared his proper arrangements for tomorrow's function of rama's incarnation the king entered the palace of queen kaikeyi finding lonely chamber he inquired the maid about kaikeyi he was told that she was confined in the displeasure cell of the palace he entered the cell and touching her body inquired the reason for her anger tell me who has caused this condition whom should i punish or if required pronounce the death penalty for the people who troubling you i can't stay without you i swear by rama that i will do what suits you when kekai heard that king swearing by rama she wiped her tears and spoke you are truthful to your words and you are sworn also on the name of rama i must i must clarify i must clarify my stand i take you to the period of battle between the gods and demons some years ago impressed by my bravery you gave me two boons and they are in our custody today i claim those two boons one is bharata should be crowned tomorrow and they as a you are prince agent prince and second is rama shall live for 14 years of forest living where he shall remain in the garb of sages and eating fruits and roots thereafter he can come back to ayodhya or go wherever he likes if he does not go to forest tomorrow morning i shall end my life this is what kaikeyi warned king dashratha the king dashratha was shocked and fell over the floor like a damaged mountain in short while he recovered and thought was it a dream he was asking he found kaikeyi near him sitting like a lioness he asked her to exempt rama from such harsh punishment of going to the forest for 14 years i accept bharata to be crowned tomorrow as a king but no banishment to rama please help me it is you who on several occasions had praised ramachandra to be lovable and endearing endearing to you why do you exile rama don't do this she did not relent and mentioned if he does not leave the tomorrow the palace to the warning for the forest i would take a poison and hang down before you to end my life for dishonoring your words i am sure you will face a hell while the king was drowned in the sorrow and remained unconscious it was dawn time the the birds coming to wake up the king were prevented by kake over the central entry maidens elephants and all other arrangements for coronation were made made ready the citizens could not sleep at night and were passionately waiting to have glimpse of ramachandra be crowned as a king sumatra could not track the king and he quietly came to the chamber of kaikeyi when he offered his salutation and hailed his victory the king did not respond he inquired from the queen kaikeyi why does the king look agitated why is on the floor she spoke he could not sleep entire night and could only speak o rama o rama like that he was chanting rama's name better you go and get rama here sumatra submitted to her unless i get the king's command how can i do that responding to his words the king asked him to get rama king dashratha asked sumantra to bring rama to his place sumantra straight away went to rama and spoke the king wants to see you immediately a little surprised rama drove to the palace with lakshmana on the central entry he could see 
which Vasishta Maharshi and others whom he offered his symbolic honor and came to meet the father Dasharatha Maharaja. When he offered his salutation to his feet, Dasharatha, he wanted to get up and embrace him, but he fell unconscious saying, O Rama, O Rama, O Rama, upset Rama, picking him up in his arms, took him in his lap. Seeing the condition of the king, woman of the palace lamented loudly, hearing the hue and cry inside the palace, Vasishta Maharshi also arrived to the king. In the meanwhile, Rama inquired from the queen Kaikeyi, what is the reason why he is up upset, why the king is in sorrow? She replied, this state of king is because of you. You are truthful and you should make him also truthful. He is shy of talking to you. Rama was surprised over Kaikeyi's words. He further spoke, why do you speak like this? I can offer my life, can take poison for his sake, if need. B. I can discard Kausalya, Sita and entire kingdom. Hearing his firm words, Kaikeyi again spoke, Let me tell you the truth. Kaikeyi queens telling, Let me tell you the truth. I had two boons pending with king. I claim those two boons today. According to the first, with all necessary arrangements made for your coronation, let Bharat be anointed as a instead of you. Secondly, you have you live immediately for 14 years in the garb of ascetic to the forest, living in forest. Rama spoke to the queen, O oh mother, Bharat must enjoy this kingdom. I live for Dandakarana now, but why does the king prefer to speak to me? Hearing Rama's word, Dasaratha broke his silence. Rama, you must imprison this sinner like me, who is immersed in luxurious, lustrous of luxury. Grab this kingdom and become the master. I would also be freed from my words. Saying thus, he wailed, crying, Rama, Rama, Rama. He embraced Rama and continued wailing. Talking, uh, taking water in his hand, Rama wiped his ears, tears and encouraged him with his sweet words. There is nothing to worry if my younger brother was the reign of his hands. In due course, honoring your words, I would also come back from forest if I go to forest. It has several advantages. I would be able to serve the cause of the gods. Mother Kaikeyi shall remain happy and your words shall be honored. Let these suspicious materials be kept safely for Bharat. I would leave immediately, consoling Kausalya and Sita. Saying thus, he gave respectful rounds to Father Dasharatha and came straight to his mother Kausalya's chamber. A little earlier, she had sent off Brahmins with precious gifts and had taken a silent meditation praying Vishnu in her heart. Due to, the, due to her deep concentration on the vision of Vishnu, she could not notice the presence of Rama. Parameshwara, Lord Parameshwara continued his narrating Ramayana to Parvati Mata. The entire Dashrata's palace gone into the mourning period with Kaikeyi's demand of sending Rama to forest for 14 years and Bharata to become king as per the demand of Kaikeyi. Rama came to the chamber of Kausalya. Kausalya did not give attention to Rama's coming. Sumitra, touching Kausalya, made her aware the presence of Rama in her chamber. Kausalya came and drew him close to her lips. Laps. Kausalya drew him close in her laps and sniffed his head with love and affection. She spoke to him, you must be hungry, let me give you some food. Rama intervened and spoke to her, Mother, I don't have time to eat food. Under the commitment to Kaikeyi Mata, the king has given this kingdom to Bharat, my brother, and 14 years forest for my term. Forest turned to me. I have to stay in forest 
in the garb of ascetic, like a saint, like a rishi, bless me to leave the for the forest. The word of Rama shocked her mother, shocked his mother. If you really go to forest, take me also with you. As per the wish of the king, kingdom can go to Bharat. You can go to forest, but I will come with you. The king has used this discretion and you are bound to honor his words. But you need to accept my request also. Seeing the condition of Kausalya and Lakshmana became very angry, he intervened. I defy this royal decree. Under these circumstances, he had given words to Kaiki. I am ready to imprison his father Dashratha and Kaikeyi and advise Rama to proceed for coronation. He, Lakshmana said, I alone shall face the army of maternal uncle of Bharat if necessary. The way spoken by Lakshmana, Rama was not happy. Rama talked to Lakshmana in confidence. Rama responded to pacify Lakshmana. In Adhyatma Ramayana, we will see a lot, lot of advices of Rama to Lakshmana, which is advice to all the human being in our world. The admiration of Rama to loving brother, affection, affectionate brother Lakshmana Pacifying Lakshmana in several ways, Rama fell like a baton over the mother's feet and maintained his prostration for some time. The mother picked him up and taking him in her lap spoke to him, Let Brahma, Shiva, Vishnu and all other gods provide you safety while you move, sleep and sit in the forest. Getting sent off blessing from mother, Rama left for he left his palace to console Sita. On the way, Lakshmana spoke to him with wheeling tears. You have clarified my doubts. Accept me as your servant in the forest. If you deny me this opportunity, I have no desire to live. Rama agreed to his proposal also and asked him to come without further delay. When, when he came near Sita, she washed his feet and expressed his surprises, her surprises. You came without army protection. You are going to be coronated as a king. You came without army protection. Where is the royal umbrella? I don't see crown overhead. Cleaning her doubts, clearing his doubts, Rama spoke to her. Father has awarded the kingdom to Bharata and reign of Dandaka forest. For me, I have to go to forest for 14 years. Instead of me, now Bharat shall be crowned. This is because of the Kaikeya's pending two boons with the king in the past. The, to honor his words, I am moving for the forest without any further delay. Responding to his words, Sita submitted, Before you move out, I would lead you to the forest. Rama tried to convince her about the difficulties of the forest several times in several respects. Sita refused to listen to him. Sita said she is going to follow Rama and look after Rama in the forest also. The root is full of thorns, the animals and the difficulty in the forest with violent animals. And Sita said wherever Rama is there, Sita will be happy to live there. Fruits are sour and their stock and availability is limited. Food is also may not be available all the days. She did not take his points and further pleaded, In your presence all the shortcomings shall be my comfort. Sita said, In your presence all the surroundings and shortcomings shall be my comfort. I would take your, your leftover without any additional arrangement for me. In my childhood, the astrologer has predicted about my forest life and I see that is coming true now. 
I ask you one more question. You have satisfied the, the uh, all the Brahmins in several ways, on several occasions. Have you ever heard of Rama moving without Sita in the forest? If you deny me to go with you, I would prefer to end my life. This is what Sita said. Rama realized her resolve, her determination, and consented for her company to him also. He advised her to gift her jewels to Arundhati, the consort of Vasishta Maharshi. He further called Brahmins, attendants of his mother, and gifted them all his belongings. In the meanwhile, Lakshmana, offering his mother in the custody of Kausalya, joined him. On the way to forest, Rama, Sita, and Lakshmana, walking steadily over the main street of Ayodhya, arrived at the father's palace. Onlookers had a rare view of divine union. Lord Parameshwara continued his narrating the Ramayana to Parvati. On the way, the king's palace, those who had a glimpse of moving, Trio were moved by the scene of separation. Some of them cursed the Kaikeyi, while some cursed the king. Vamadeva, the great among sages, pacified the crowd. The moving trio of Rama, Lakshmana and Sita is the divine incarnation of Vishnu, Shesha and Lakshmi. Brahma, who conducts the creation of Rajaguna, Rajoguna, form of Narayana in Sattvaguna, from Narayana is Vishnu and he sustains the universe. At the end creation, during dissolution, Rudra is Stamogra, manifestation of Narayana. Vamadeva further gave the details of his various manifestations known from time to time. During dissolution flood, he assumed the form of a fish, Matsya, and saved the life of Vaivasvata, Manu. On other occasion, when ocean stirring was in progress, he assumed the form of Taratais, Kurma Avatara. On another occasion, when ocean stirring was in progress, he assumed the form of Taratais Kurma, Kurma Avatara and supported the uh, Mandarachala uh, Parvata on his back. During the great dissolution, the earth and sunk the down deep in the water and in bore. Varaha Avatara. He retrieved the, it, the, retrieved the earth from the bottom of the ocean after killing Hiranyaksha. For the safety of Prahlada, he assumed the lion form, Narasimha Avatara. He killed Hiranyakashipu with his terribly sharp nails. On the other, on the prayer of Aditi, he incarnated as Vamana, becomes Vamana Avatara and restored the lost position of Indra to eradicate the devil Kshatriya. He incarnated Parashurama in the present life as Rama. He will kill Ravana. Vamadeva was explaining the Avataras of Vishnu to the people who are Rama, Lakshmana and Sita arrived back to the Kaikeya's palace where Dashrata was lying on the floor. And Rama told Kaikeya's mother and father Dashrata that he is moving to the forest with Sita and Lakshmana as Kaikeya's mother wanted. And Vasishta Maharshi said, Sita is not involved in this boon. Sita, Sita need not go to the forest. But Rama said, Sita insisting that she has to come with me and Lakshmana also insisting. That's why all the three of them, Kaikeyi brought the dresses or uniform of sages to wear for Rama, Lakshmana and Sita. And they all changed the dress Thus is the asked Sumantra, the king, the prime minister, to keep the chariot ready to escort them, and speaking thus, he fell unconscious again. Sita first rode to the chariot, 
and followed by Rama and then Lakshmana. Lakshmana mounted himself holding twin swords, twin bows and twin quivers of arrows. They asked Sumantra to move but the king cried to stop the chariot. Rama intervened and asked Sumantra the minister to proceed to the forest. Subsequently, Rama, Lakshmana and Sita arrived at the bank of the Tamasa river. Tamasa river. He camped for the night and rested over the grass bed before taking only water. After taking only water, Lakshmana maintained a vigil around Rama and Sita. When the citizens arrived there, he advised Sumantra to leave the palace early and he mentioned, for my sake, why the citizens will live a difficult life in the forest. Subsequently, the chariot first left towards Ayodhya and then turned towards the forest. Later, when the citizens woke up, they did not find the Rama, Lakshmana and Sita. Following the mark of wheel of chariot, they were misguided by Ayodhya. Proceeding forward, Rama arrived in the Gang bank of Ganges river near Shringavairupura. Taking bath in the Ganges river, he rested over grass bed under the, under the tree. The tribal king of the place was Guha. He heard about his arrival of Rama and Lakshmana to his place and he came to greet him and with lots of fruits and uh, respect. The tribal king Guha was surprised that Rama, Lakshmana and Sita are in the way are dressed like a saints and sages. Rama met him warmly and embraced Guha to his chest. Guha was overjoyed by the warmth demonstrated by Ramachandra. He spoke, you are a real friend of mine. I request you to grace my place with your presence. Rama was happy to hear his words but mentioned, for 14 years I have to stay as an ascetic out of the towns and villages in the forest. I won't have to eat the materials brought by others. I respect your affection to me. Lord Rama respectfully told Guha to take the food back. Thereafter he dressed his own hair and that of Lakshmana in the style of ascetics using the milky sap of banyan tree. Thereafter, he slept with Sita, taking water only over the grass bed. Lakshmana and Guha, keeping awake at night, equipped with bow and arrows, maintained vigil around Rama and Sita.